103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. I think comedians today are probably the people we can most rely on as far as explaining something that's true with as little fear of being biased or repercussions or being in the pocket of like some bigger uh, agenda. Like, I feel like the, the best truth comes from comedians. What do you think? Well, welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, live right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today's September 15th, and if it's not, you're listening to a rebroadcast of the show or a podcast and should not be trying to call in. I'm Daughter 5, and as usual, we have Wombat on the phone with us today. Hello, Wombat. I'm the Wombat! Let's go! You are. And we have Carl Merritt, an atheist comedian with us today. Hello, Carl. All right, all right, all right. Let's get this thing going. Works for me. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a call-in talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, God's holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show break. Also, did you know that there's an atheist call-in television show broadcasting here in Knoxville and has been for over nine years? Did you know that, Wombat? Oh, of course I knew about it. The only thing is did? I didn't want to tell you because you're kind of out of the loop on certain things. Me? And I didn't want to make you feel bad by surprising <laughs> you with all this information all at once. Couldn't, couldn't happen. <laughs> anyway, we'll tell you how you can watch that after the mid-show break. We'll give you all the details on that call-in show. Uh, and in spite of what Steve Martin would have you think, there are an awful lot of atheist songs out there. And you'll be hearing some of them right here on this program and generally on this station as they are in rotation. Today's topic is comedy. And Carl, I believe you'd like to tell us a little bit about your acting and what you're all about. Would you mind taking it away? Absolutely. Um, I have been a comic for a while and uh, something kind of strange happened that put me on this path. Uh -huh. I was in a show. Uh, there were two shows. It was in a theater. And after the first show, uh, I got fired. Uh, I did a bit about God and guns. Oh, I can imagine. And there were... Com <laughs> was there this, were in, this is in Texas, right? This is in Dallas, Texas. Oh, my goodness. So uh, they, they fired me. And uh, the very next day, I got uh, contacted because of a video that I've, I've got on YouTube uh, from someone with a an atheist podcast here in Texas. Cool. And so I did an interview over there, and it took off. Uh, thousands of people started uh, watching the video. And throughout my life, I've always been a liberal, uh -huh. and I've always been an atheist. Cool. So. I saw this and I thought, okay, uh, even though I don't really introduce myself that way, it's like, hi, I'm Carl, I'm right-handed. It's just, it is. Uh -huh. um, I decided I'm just going to go all in on this. So uh, <laughs> let me put it this way. If you want to reach me, uh, it's uh, on liberalatheistcomic.com. Oh, okay. that's, that's how far we're in on this one. <laughs> That's the way that uh, people know me at this stage. Is that all one word? I mean, like liberalatheistcomic.com on, uh, yes, on the website? Yes, liberal, it's just liberalatheistcomic.com. Okay, cool. And you can uh, hit me on Twitter from uh, the website, but the Twitter handle is lib, L-I-B, atheist comic. Okay, cool. I keep wanting to spell comic with two C, uh, two M's, I mean. Not cool. But anyway, uh, tell us what got you into that in the first place. I mean, why comedy? Yeah, and if I you mean, don't mind. You didn't, you didn't start off in college or anything like that, did you? Oh, hell no. I'm 64 years old. Who? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can you start at the beginning, too? It seemed like you had done a lot of, like, live shows and play acting before, <laughs> like, classically trained. Like, what? how did, like, what's the whole process to get into the point where you're like now comfortable in front of an audience and you can actually start making jabs about like 
you know, <laughs> like things that people kind of hold really closely. Like what's the difference between like acting in front of a stage versus being on a, on the end of a mic in front of an audience? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting to me. I do have an acting back. No, oh, okay, cool. Uh, a fair, I've done a fair amount of theater. Mm -hmm. And, uh, again, things just happen in life. Um, I found myself, a friend of mine was taking a comedy class, uh, a stand-up comedy class, and had to drop out of it and said, you know, they're not going to give me a refund. Would you like to sit in on the class? Really? What a golden opportunity. And, well, you know, it's something that everyone that is told, oh, you ought to do stand-up. Well, uh -huh. that's a mistake. Hmm. Uh Stand-up comedy is really acting. Uh, if I do my job properly, people think it's just coming off the top of my head. But everything is scripted. I, I write sure. this material, and um, from show to show, if I'm doing the same bit, it is the same bit. Yeah. Um, if I'm doing a bit, it's going to be the same bit Every time I do it in the show, uh, the thing uh -huh. about comedy is that uh, it, it's a very difficult, I think the most difficult art form. Uh, you're writing and you're acting. Uh, the acting is a character that is uh, an exaggerated version of yourself. Mm. Um, you take a writer, Stephen King. He's a great writer, but he can't act. You take an actor like Brad Pitt, great actor. He can't write. For the, the stand-up comic, you are writing your own material and you're performing it. Mm. So it, it is the most difficult of uh, all the art forms, I think, because I've, as I said, I've done a fair amount of theater. And, uh, you know, you've got a script. You've got someone else's words and you're trying to interpret those words. Right. In this, you're... Um, <laughs> interpreting your own words. Do you ever find no, like no. you, you ever feel right. like you can do that dishonestly? Like, is there a way that you can cheat to get through? I don't know, even like one night of like telling jokes. Like, I'm not feeling it today, or something really bad happened to me today, but I can't. But I have to pretend to be in this character and, and just gut my way through it. Like, is that easy, or has that ever happened? Well, I mean, of course, um, everybody has good days and bad days. Yeah. But uh, my bad day uh, isn't because of people that show up in a club or in a theater uh, to to laugh for an evening. You know, this is a, a you know, <clears throat> suck it up, buttercup. Yeah. You're here for a job, and let's let's get this going. Yeah, I would think yeah. that that would be really hard, especially if you're an atheist, having to deal with the hecklers and all that. Oh. Have, have you ran into that? Uh, it's a really bad idea, generally, to heckle a stand-up comedian. No, oh, yeah, I know. I've seen, I've seen some of them handle hecklers. Oh. It never comes out well for them. And I really have not had very many problems with that. When when I start my act, uh, my first line is, "I'm a 64 year old liberal atheist, born and raised in Texas." Mm -hmm. Let's have some fun. Right. Well, right. you know what you're in for. Uh, so, and most of the people that will come to see me um, will know beforehand what the, what the the subject matter is that I'm going after. Right. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had people just get up and walk out when you say that? Oh. <laughs> Let them. I've never had anyone get up at the very beginning of the act. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I say that and yeah. leave, but you know, some of my material is, uh, a little on the edgier side uh -huh. and, um, I have had people get up and walk out. <laughs> you, you know what? I'm not everybody's cup of tea. So if this is not for you, then, uh, ease on down the road. Right. There are plenty of liberals mm -hmm. and plenty of atheists in this world. <laughs> Right. that will embrace what I'm doing. Yeah. I got the fact is I'm I'm really unlikely to get booked at a church. Speaking right. of churches, this is an interesting mm -hmm. point. Has your experience in stand up increased your appreciation for the weekly sermon at all? 
Like when you see like a pastor come up and be like, oh, and he's like a member of a mega church or something like that. And he's just like, oh, we need your money. We really, really need your money. Like this boat, this church boat is going to really help us out. And we just need everyone's $5 donations, 10% of their paychecks, free volunteer time. Anything that you can offer, please, please, please. Like, does that get you a little bit more appreciative? Like, hey, his his candor is good. His temper is fine. He's speaking well into the mic. Um, I'm really impressed with this <laughs> that, guy. For his presentation. Huh? Yeah, yeah. That, like... that is an excellent, excellent question. Because I have always thought that uh, you know, these mega church pastors are actors. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, if, if you... Uh, have a well-structured pitch. Hmm. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know that each person can do it. But wait. Yeah. Let me take you there from you grit to grace, right. from loneliness <laughs> to holiness. I see a uh-huh. heat one coming on today. There you go. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And that brings up that brings up the uh, clergy project. Have you ever heard of that? Oh, yeah. It, uh, Carl? No, I have not. Because uh, yeah, the clergy project is a project started by a couple of atheists. Uh, one of them was Dan Dennett and uh, uh, Dan Barker. Um, this is a group of clergy who no longer believe. Uh, they they actually take clergy who are stuck in their jobs because they're afraid to quit because it costs them their family, their friends, and their job. And they work with them all the way through this project to give them the skills that they need to leave the clergy and go out into the world and work uh, secular jobs. And they, they can handle up to 400 clergy at a time, and they they stay full. And so you know that those clergy are acting from the pulpit, which was the point you were making, that they are acting, or a lot of them are. Well, yeah, absolutely. So playing a part. Yeah. You know, in, in, in my estimation, these are all uh-huh. um, actors. Uh, now, the fact that you believe in your character doesn't change my, my general view of this. Right, right. So, um, would you recommend people get into comedy, uh, especially particularly atheist comedy at this time, or do you, <laughs> is it a r- rough road to hoe? Uh, well, uh, first off, I think everybody that is listening today uh, knows that being an atheist is not the most popular thing to do. Right. Um, you don't do it for popularity. No, you don't choose to do it in the first place i have not in my no, that's a good my point that's a good point yeah you don't choose it. i've not well, i've not had a a big personal problem in my life being an atheist um you know yeah. again if you don't care for uh me then there's seven and a half billion people in the world find someone else um right. <laughs> i would suggest everybody uh um, if you feel like you'd like to try stand-up comedy, uh, I don't know about Knoxville, but in Dallas, there are open mics almost every night. All the time. Yeah. You can try it. The problem is, it's not what you think it is. It's not just getting up and telling a couple of jokes. It is a highly structured um, writing exercise uh, to mm-hmm. go from an opening to a middle to a close mm-hmm. over the course of a show. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so spend your time writing before you ever pick up the mic. What oh, you're oh, yes, yes. What people don't understand, I think, generally, is when you see a comedy special on oh, yep. HBO or Netflix, that material has been worked in clubs in theaters, right. in different venues, sure. for um, months, if not years, hmm. right. before it goes out and is recorded for the show. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Even and I'd like to t- take just a second to welcome Fanny to the call. Hey, uh, Fanny. Fanny came on a little while ago, uh, and uh, <laughs> let her say a word or two, uh, maybe ask a good question if she needs to. Thank you for having me again. <laughs> oh, good. 
Yeah, no, I, I was listening. It's really good. I, I always write little jokes about, you know, I think the, this thing, this content of being, um, stand up comedy that like comedy that you make during your day and then sometimes you write, but I, I'm, I'm really afraid of like the stage as a comedian. So that is just like a little dream that I have. I would take, I would take calls, uh, advice to try one day a class mm-hmm. if I find. Opportunity. Yeah. yeah, me too. <laughs> I've always thought that, that I'd like to try it. Fanny, I but, thought you would appreciate the platform in the event that I think comedians today are probably the people we can most rely on as far as explaining something that's true with as little fear of being biased or repercussions or being in the pocket of like some bigger uh, agenda. Like, I feel like the, the best truth comes from comedians. What do you think? <laughs> Well, I think uh, we mentioned this through message uh, uh, this week. Mm. Uh, my my questions and all my interests around com- comedy right now, it has been a lot on the culture war. Mm. And I think I mentioned to you that Dave Chappelle special Netflix <clears throat> was really funny. And you know how, how that has been conflictual, right. uh, the... You no, know, like all the, the, the criticism around it. And, um, but I, I do have, like I told you, I think it, it, I like Dave Chappelle because it is all about the free speech and real comedy. Like we, we always accepted before. And now mm-hmm. we're going through this little censorship in online. Yeah. In the virtual world. But I do not like that. For some reason, and probably most of because of that culture war, he apparently is the only one or one of very few comedians that is allowed to do that. So that is my criticism in general, you know, you know with comedy. Uh, I would like to ask Carl, how is the, the censorship? Does he use uh, social media to make some jokes, sometimes throw something online? And how is the feedback or the backlash? Great question. Well, there, there, there's no censorship for me. Um, you know, well, I, I say that. Uh, I'm aware of an audience that I'm in. Mm-hmm. If I'm at a corporate event, then I'm going to do material that speaks more to that audience than I would in a club. Uh, I will tell you, as far as censorship goes, here is the line that got me fired before the the uh, liberal atheist comic was born. Um, the the it starts out um, that it's weird that the first thing that people do after a church shooting is pray, yeah. praying for the victim of a church massacre is like shooting up for the victim of a heroin overdose. Uh Yeah. Um, My feeling is, since I'm in Texas, and clearly they're not going to do anything about guns here, that what we should do is shut down all the churches and turn them into massage parlors. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because there's never been a mass shooting at a massage parlor. Yet. (laughs) Sorry to be so dark. And the lights go down. <laughs> After the show, the oh, really? complaints from the audience. That was the line that did it? You know, there, I have several things that I talk about. I talk about in that bit. But that, I think, was the, the most controversial. Wow. Uh, most of it was, um, you know, it was comedy, but it was not uh, gods and guns in yeah. Texas. Yeah. And so my supposition is, although no one ever came up and said, I was the one that complained, um, that's what my my guess is. Nobody waiting for you in the parking lot? You know, I have have been surprised at times that after I will do a bit, um, there isn't someone out in the parking lot Mm -hmm. wanting to bust a cap in me. Yeah. Um, But again... This is what I have chosen to do. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to back off of material that I write uh, for the sensibilities of, you know, a particular group. Again, <laughs> I'm not going to get booked in a church. 
Yeah. It is really unlikely I'm going to get called to do a Trump rally. Right. <laughs> How about this? Yeah. Have you ever gotten you know backlash that? from other atheists? You know, I guess there are some um, atheists are not a monolithic. Exactly. Group. Some right? people find, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you know, certain topics funnier than other topics. Um, but I haven't had a lot of backlash um, really from any group I can identify. Yeah. I've been fired, yeah. but I can't really tell you the demographics of the person that complained that, that caused me to get yeah. bumped. Well, your story yeah. about you how you got... You managed to make a, you an got, enemy group. <laughs> yeah. No, your story about how you got fired from one group and then the an atheist group found you and, and then hired you again uh, goes along with a lot of the people that I talk to saying that Oh, I don't want to come out of the atheist closet. My Christian friends will no longer like me. I said, "Well, yeah, but you're living a lie for them, aren't you? You're you're trying you're you're saying that you're a Christian when you're not, or you're saying you're religious when you're not, well, and you're ignoring all the other atheists that would also come out or might tell you that they're atheists if you did come out." Um, so I think it, it teaches a, a lesson that there's a there's a niche for us out there, at least a niche, maybe more. Uh, not only that, but there are a lot of Christian people that wouldn't care if you went one way or the other. So, uh, you know, you're you're kind of uh, lying to yourself if you're saying I'm staying in the atheist closet because I want to keep my friends. Uh, get some better friends. There you go. That's that, the case. You know? That is a gene that I am missing. Uh, I have never, for anything that I've uh, done in my life, have I ever felt that I needed to be in the closet. Uh, again, cool. I'm an atheist in the Bible Belt, but I never felt that I had to deny who I am. I am a liberal in Texas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're in Dallas, which is a pretty big city. You're not living in Lubbock or something like that. Right. I can tell you, though, if I were um, in Lubbock, this wouldn't change. Um, it, if, if I were gay... I would not have a problem mm -hmm. in the world saying that I'm gay. If people wanted to shun me because of that, you know, I don't want to hang with them anyway. Right. Well, we're and, lucky that we live in a, 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 a later time. I mean, if this was 1950 and you came out as gay, that you could be arrested and persecuted and put in jail. Yeah. Fine. You know, prison. Uh, so uh, we we are fortunate to live in the time that we are. Yeah, what I'm um, hearing is like things things used to suck if you weren't a particular person, but now right. things are getting slowly better. But things could, I mean, it doesn't mean it's equally better for everyone, but it does mean that things True. are getting better and we're on the right trajectory. The thing that we need is more people outspoken like you so that we can normalize atheism away from a caricature that theists have and more of like, hey, theists disagree with each other. Theists can tell jokes. Theists can be really loving people and family members that you might know very well already. And now that changes the paradigm that people try to offer of what atheism is, because now they have real concrete examples, real faces, real people that they can point to and say, no, this is my neighbor is an atheist and I like him or my kid's an atheist right. and I like him uh -huh. as a kid. Get to know some. Exactly. Before and you condemn them. It shows the monster for what it is and not a monster yep. at all. It's really great. And I think you know, you're doing this stuff, you doing the stand up really helps push that effort forward. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Normalize it. Well, you know, I, I've always thought my, my, uh, my, my current view is that people are hardwired to um, view the locus of control in life as either internal or external. I've always been an internal locus of control kind of guy. I am told, I mean, I, I don't really remember this because I was five years old, but I was, I, I've been told that my first atheist comment was made at five. Oh, really? <laughs> what was there that? A, Do you remember? There were I mean, a group, did they tell you what they said? Oh, yeah, said? yeah, yeah, yeah. There were a group of older kids that came over. And they were talking to some of us younger kids and said, we know something that you believe in that's not real. And I said, you mean God? 
<laughs> and they went crazy and saying, I am told, they said, oh, no, 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 no. Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, I really like Santa Claus. Santa Claus. <laughs> this, is, this is a loss. <laughs> this is going to leave a mark. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And you know the other I think thing... I believe for some time that they were the same person. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for a long time I think I believed they were the same person. They were like old guy, old uh -huh. bearded guys that give you good things when you're good. Yeah, and you ask them for things. And will give you bad <laughs> things if you're bad. Yeah. It's, yep. it's the same exact story. Really when you think about it. Oh, uh, hey. And guys. then later I just wanted to gods to be like santa claus to like not be bad at all right. Right. would only be good you know or could only be do good to you cool so yep. we're at the bottom of the yep. hour how about we pick up um after a quick break where we do a caller station id um you guys have been listening to 103.9 fm low power woes of radio straight from uh knoxville, knoxville tennessee knox patch uh we'll come That's back right. and talk to you guys later see you after the break okay okay see you in a minute yeah. you're listening to the digital free thought radio hour on wozo 103.9 lpfm in knoxville tennessee feel free to join in on the conversation at 865-333-5937 that's 865-333-5937. And now, back to the show. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Simply the best. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Five, and this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is September 15th. And if it's not, you're listening to a rebroadcast of the show or a podcast and should not be trying to call in. Okay, let's talk about the free thought groups that you can join here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville, founded in 2002. We're in our 17th year. ASK now has over 975 members, pushing on 1,000. And you can find us online at knoxvilleatheist.org. Or you can go directly to Meetup and search for Atheists in Knoxville. It's just that simple. Also, you can join ASK in, per in person at our weekly Meetup, which happens every Tuesday at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria in the Old City, where we get together for food, drink, and conversation. Everyone is welcome. That is, as long as you don't come to preach, proselytize, provoke, or punch. Thank you, Atheist Experience. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. If you don't find one, start one. Another large free-thinking group here in Knoxville are the Rationalists of East Tennessee. And they've been around for more than 20 years. RET has bi-weekly presentations and discussions at the Pellistippi State Campus near Hardin Valley Road. They meet the first and third Sundays at the Goins Administration Building, Cafeteria Annex. And if that's too much to remember, just go to rationalist.org and click on Upcoming Events. Then there's also the Sunday Assembly, which started in England a few years ago and now has spread around the world. It's a no-God church setting for those who no longer believe in gods, but still like the fellowship of a church-type gathering. They only meet once a month in Knoxville, though, on the fourth Sunday, and you'll find them in the World's Fair site in the International Building area. Then there's the Secular Student Alliance. Now that college has started back, uh, they have programs that give camaraderie and community to any free-thinking high school or college student who would like to be involved in the free thought movement or would just like to find other free thinkers to hang with. Everybody needs like-minded friends, and atheists are no different. Earlier in the show, we said we'd talk about the atheist uh, call-in TV show. Well, it's called Free Thought Forum, and you can find it most every Wednesday between 6.30 and 7.30 on Comcast Channel 12 or Charter Channel 192. And you can watch it streaming online at ctvnox.org. You can also find archive of some of their shows on YouTube where a fan has been recording and posting them. Just go to YouTube and search for three words, Free Thought Forum Knoxville. And if you're interested in getting involved in the, re the TV show or this radio show, just come to an Ask or RET meetup and talk to us about it. You can be our next co-host or guest. Uh, back to our guest, matter of fact, first of all, we have our co-host online, which is Ty, our wombat. Say hi. Yo, 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 Dr. Wells in the house. Let's go. Not uh, really. 
<laughs> and Carl Merritt, com an atheist comic. Uh, welcome, Carl and Fanny, on the call. So let's get back to it. Um, anything you'd like to uh, put out your your uh, links and or uh, advertise what you're doing there, Carl, before we go on any farther? Uh, yes, you can uh, find me on my website, liberalatheistcomic.com, and my is lib l i b atheist comic yeah we were all talking about how we'd all like to be uh comics but uh lack of the either writing skills or just the gumption <laughs> to do it i'd love to try it myself but i'd have to spend some time writing first so i've actually done well, it oh, i'm sorry i have I, you i did some stand up yeah 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 i've done a seven minute set a couple of times uh while i was in atlanta and then uh, i used parts of it <laughs> for my work uh when, when i was doing like uh monthly safety meetings uh when i was in knoxville and i can it wasn't about religion but it's very much exactly what um carl had been alluding to it's more of like a uh, you're making a caricature of yourself and those are the ones those are the jokes that hit the best when people can believe that these are stories or opinions that you actually have and or observations that you've made and as even as a character but like um when you offer a little bit of yourself in the joke and use that to connect with people it really does change things so now that like i am like an atheist it seems like that would be a really cool way to bring up jokes even not on a stage but like as a way to break the ice of letting people know that i'm not necessarily religious i think i was so i was at um i was at a uh dinner party last night we we're just having some um uh, we're making chinese dumplings and um i remember uh, i was with a group of people who were some of them were my coworkers, and i i i i don't think i dropped the a-bomb around those people so what i've done what i did was instead say hey guys remember when we were at that last you know potluck together and there was that preacher who was like praying when we we're just about to eat and everyone was like yeah. ah that's funny and i was just like come on dude just hurry up and so they're like yeah we just bow our heads and wait for it because you know the preacher just got to do his thing and stuff like that i'm like no nah, i keep my eyes open and i look for everybody else to see if they're on the same level with me and i'm like okay these are the fun people yeah. to talk to <laughs> and everyone yeah. was laughing for there but i think mm -hmm. that's like a good way to just like begin to like edge into the idea of like hey you know what you know i'm not a religious guy don't ca don't characterize me as one but i'm still one of your guys's friends uh, and we can maintain that work relationship that we have, of course, but you should at least know where I'm coming from on like a lot of these subjects without having mm -hmm. a drop loaded words in front of them. Yeah. Well, congrats on coming out. That's great. Oh, not holding back. Yeah. But I find humor is a really great way to bridge that gap. Uh, oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, I find also um, this is the person that I am. And so I'm not going to hide from anything. Uh, I, I don't no really make it the first thing I tell people. I mean, the old joke is, how can you tell uh, if someone's an atheist, a vegan, yeah. or into uh -huh. CrossFit? Right. Wait 30 seconds and they'll tell you. Right. <clears throat> well, I generally, I, I have uh, a, a large variety of topics that I can talk about with people. And, you know, sometimes uh, being an atheist will come up. It almost certainly will come up if people start telling me about their religion. If it's good for right. you, it's going to be good for me. Right. Exactly. But if you want to talk politics, I'm fine with that, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if they broach the subject, then it's, it's anybody's uh, bailiwick. They, you can jump in with your own opinions. Everybody's got one. They've, they've opened the door. Right. You know, now, what are you... we're talking about the reaction that... Yeah. Um, people have a uh, two atheist i have a little bit in my background that tends to freak them out uh i was married for 28 years and for half of that time my wife was battling leukemia no oh. and i was not just a caregiver i was a super caregiver um i would uh the stat that I heard when she was diagnosed is that 90% of people that are in relationships, when this diagnosis hits, breaks up within a year. Wow. Well, we were together for 14 years after her diagnosis, before she died. Wow. And the Christians can't figure out how an atheist 
would stick with somebody that was ill for 14 years. Right. Since they don't understand love and, and companionship and, and all of that, they, how, they don't have any morals. How could they possibly be a good person? I, I look at it completely the opposite way. If you don't think that I am a, a kind and decent person intrinsically, you're just being kind and decent so you don't go to hell. Right. You know, it to me, it, it's not really decency if someone's got a gun to your head. Mm -hmm. It's fear. It's fear yeah. punishment. Yeah. And it, it tells a lot when you hear people describing themselves as God-fearing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it does say a lot. Who wouldn't be afraid of an invisible sky giant? Yeah. It's spooky. Uh, omniscient yeah. judgment or judge watching your every thought. Yeah. Uh, is this not like uh, I always like to do this dichotomy in between people that believe God being good and people that do not believe God being good. I think there is a big difference and there is something, you know, <laughs> no sense cuts through man fallacy, but uh, saying that there is a real good and there is someone that is not that good because if you being good for fearing uh, hell or for wishing, you know, hoping to go to heavens, I don't think that the intention, you know, to get this second thing, to get this result out of being good uh -huh. makes you really good. Right. But uh, in the other way, the atheist that do, is not being driven by any intention and just be good to be other people for no reason, that is really being good for right. real, you know? Right. right. And following rules like the Ten Commandments is not morality, it's obedience. So, you know, it's they what claim... They say, like, you're just a trained yeah. dog. Right. You're claiming morality, but you're really just following the rules that lay, that are laid down with punishment at the other end if you don't follow those rules. Well, I, I think that uh, it's, it's interesting to me that, um, again, I think it's the, the external locus of control. I think people are hardwired to, to believe this way. But they will decide that they've got the, the, the way and the truth and the light and they're believing in a fairy tale. And yeah. what I, I, I find hilarious is when uh, people will start on their religion, and I'll say, I just don't get anything out of religion or spirituality. And the, the line is always, oh, you just don't get it. Really? Really. Um, your book starts out with a couple of nudists getting dietary advice from a talking snake. And huh. I'm the one that's not getting it. All righty. Let's, yeah. let's go that direction. Yeah. No, it's, it's fantastic. It's, it's literally, uh, um, what origin story of our society and every society has an origin story, but we don't believe those other origin stories. We, we realize that they're, they're just oral traditions that are handed down for for millennia and but ours has to be true hmm. i actually have a question i'd like to bring up it's one we bring up for every guest uh normally we ask like so you know what's your religious persuasion uh and then they explain it and then we ask what it means to them so you had said and we probably should have started this at the beginning of the show but you said atheist what does that mean to you what does it mean to be an atheist for you specifically like what does that mean for you how would you define it are, are you talking to me Tom? yeah yeah Carl. Well, to me, it is, uh, this kind of goes beyond uh, religion. Okay. For the most part, I don't believe anything just on the face of it. Cool. Um, I You're have a skeptic, in other words. Yeah, yes. Like I, I have absolutely zero reason to believe that there's a God. Cool. I think, I think we're hitting the nail. Why so, would I do that? So an atheist, in your opinion, is someone who doesn't believe in a God, right? Yes, that's where I'm at, too. And the only thing that you would need to believe is good evidence, which there hasn't been any presented. <laughs> right. Is that mm -hmm. accurate? Uh, it's it's completely accurate. Okay. And yeah, 
you know, of course, they're they're not going to be able to prove there's a god. Now, let's get technical. It's here a tall for a order, yeah. And then what what are you talking about when you say god? Like that that becomes its own you know little Olympic event basically. It's just like define what you mean by this. Okay, that's an incredible thing. I don't think there's enough evidence in existence to support that, but I'll let you go for it if if it is that extraordinary. But yeah, well, I, I it, technically speaking. With with the the the, the proper vocabulary, mm-hmm. since absolutely I cannot prove a negative, I can't prove there's not a god. Right. Right. Technically speaking, I would be an agnostic. However, having said that, in the same way, I'm an agnostic as to whether leprechauns are racing unicorns around a track. Now, I can't prove that's not the case, but I've never gone out and tried to make a bet on the outcome. Sure. It just doesn't affect my life in any way, shape, or form. No, I actually don't find agnosticism and atheism to be mutually exclusive. I'm an agnostic atheist. Like, I don't know if a God exists, and I also don't believe in that God because my agnosticism is informed by my belief, and my belief is informed by my what I know and not know. So, like, I can be both. Right. And... You know, it's always it's always interesting just to having these like really short fundamental conversations because there are people who think, well, I don't like atheists, but those agnostic people are nice when <laughs> technically they're basically the same people. <laughs> right. mm-hmm. And it's just a question of like, hey, you may not just like the atheist label or yeah. people out there who are like, I, I don't believe in a God, but I don't want to be an atheist. It's like, well, yeah, and- y- you can identify with whatever you like because I'm not here to force yeah. labels on you, but. Technically, we're on the same page, and there shouldn't be any shame that's being perpetrated by you know the theists yeah. on what you are and what the right word to identify yourself with. Right. Is. I'd like to go back to what you said about how uh, religious belief isn't affecting your life at all, uh, whether you believe or not. Uh, since you don't believe it, you I believe that's where you're coming from. Since I don't believe in these things and they they're not affecting my life, it's not a problem. But of course, religious belief of other people are oh. very much affecting your life. Very true. Yes. The way that they uh, pass laws and uh, and condemn mm-hmm. you and censor and, you well, and again, try to indoctrinate your children, bullshit. et cetera, et cetera. I don't have any children, so mm-hmm. I, I'm, 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 I'm lucky on that, that part of it. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've got a 54-year-old uh, track record of uh, not having children. Uh, as far as you know. Yeah, yeah. But, but, <laughs> But Fanny does, you know, and she'll have to wor- worry about people trying to indoctrinate her children. Well, I, yeah, no, I really like the Carl's explanation of, you know, talking about atheism and agnosticism. I, I totally agree on that. And uh, but I, but I do agree with Larry that uh, do religious still influence a lot of our lives, even though we don't believe. They are moving politics, opinions, uh, social judgments, you know, little rules, not necessarily laws, but in Brazil, you know, I'm Brazilian and in Brazil, we still have this fight for secularism because Mm -hmm. our own president would, would, you know, uh, do all these testimonials and do all these speeches talking how he will not follow constitution and how he is entering to a higher uh, law religious and and moving you know things mm-hmm. on politics for 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 religious people in different sides but the, anyways just religious uh of course there is the majority that is christian and they are pushing into putting creationism back into schools into science classes you know and uh, the president itself has mentioned he would pick a very evangelical minister to push into more religious family yeah, Bible laws, uh-huh. stuff like that. Yeah. So it, it there are like, a, you know, <clears throat> and one of my questions to call would be like, I understand that maybe in North America where there is not so much uh, um, <clears throat> backlash or even like there is not so many religious people like we have in South America. Uh-huh. Uh, so you have less backlash, less of this, uh, this threat and, you know, less of the f- negative feedback 
from your audience and from people around you itself. Um, don't you think this is one of the points that makes, you know, us as people more comfortable to come out of the closet or to be ourselves here sure. in North America? Then, you know, like I, I had much more pressure when I was living in Brazil than, than living in Canada. Definitely. Yeah, I would think so. And what gets me is when uh, com a politician or an office holder says that they answer to a higher law, they don't have to law, you know, answer to our laws. Uh, it just kills me because the law that they're talking about allows for slavery, multiple marriages, no rights for women, and it demands the killing of homosexuals, unruly children, and non-virgin brides. And the penalty for breaking any of the, those laws is death. So, I mean, how long would they survive if they actually went by those laws? Well, I, I don't want to uh, mischaracterize my, my feeling on this. Okay. Um, I don't really care. I mean, I'm fortunate that this is the world I live in. If I was a female in Saudi Arabia, right. believe me, I would probably be wearing the beekeeper outfit. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to risk my life over this. I would do my best to get out of that environment being the person mm -hmm. that I am. Now, I don't really care at all what people believe. Where I draw the line is if you want to believe in creationism, knock yourself out. You cannot be on a school board. You cannot be the one picking textbooks. And I will fight tooth and nail to stop that from happening. Um, I don't care if you believe that abortion is evil. Don't get an abortion. Right. I will there fight tooth and nail for the rights of women to control their own bodies. Exactly. So, you know, again, whatever you want to believe, believe. Uh, I'm the kind of guy that looks at the Bible and thinks, okay, Harry Potter. It's a really popular book. People like it. Well, it's fiction. Now, how far you want to get into Harry Potter and, you know, religion, that's up to you. But um, I'm not going to be uh, embracing the, the fact that you think we're in Hogwarts now. Uh, okay. You, you need to move on. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Although I, I do have to tell you, I do have to tell you, if I had the opportunity... I would love to have God's job. <laughs> you know, you, yeah. you never get blamed for any of the bad stuff, right. and you always get praise for the good stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're playing football and uh, you catch a pass, you make a touchdown, you drop to one knee, bow your head, and point that index finger up to the sky. Yeah. But if you drop the pass, I've never seen the middle finger go up. No, no. I, I, he gets credit for all human accomplishments as well. I mean, you, let's say that you join AA and you quit alcohol. You know, it's not you. I have had a alcoholics tell me this. It wasn't me that quit alcohol. It was God that helped me quit. I couldn't have done it without God. So it, it, it was really literally good. them who did it. But then they turn around and give all the credit to God. So he, <clears> And okay, not only me... that, Larry, I think the worst thing on the 12 step programs mm -hmm. is to give the, the, you Control know, the of your agency, life over. Yeah, yeah. to a, a super powerful being that it's like you take the control out of the, pe mm -hmm. the person's hand. Right. You know, and the responsibility of its acts. So I think it's, it starts really mm -hmm. bad. And that's why it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Well, I have a little <laughs> bit of street that. cred on this. Uh, I signed myself up for uh, rehab three years ago. Okay. And I yeah, knew, cool. of course, that a 12-step program was not going to work for me. Because uh, I think it's 10 of the 12 steps have something to do with a higher power. Yeah. Uh -huh. So... I went into a um, cognitive behavior therapy kind of session that had the same uh, elements to it that seemed to be beneficial for AA. 
Uh, but my feeling on AA was always, okay, um, if God is my solution for getting out of this, wasn't he kind of part of the reason I got into this mess? I mean, right. why right. is it well, going to be? Control everything. I was the one that got myself into this, but he's the one that's going to get me out of it. Yep. It just yep. never made any sense. To right. Me. And by the way, this is probably a good time to uh, to put a plug in for secular sobriety uh, oh, cool. organizations. There's one called uh, SOS Sobriety. Mm -hmm. That's S O S S O B R I E T Y dot org. SOS Sobriety, and uh, it's all about uh, losing your your alcohol control to alcoholism to uh, uh, through secular means. So if you're out there and you're struggling, get them, you know, look them up. Cool. So it's some priority. And as we wrap up towards the end of the show, how about this as a final topic? Um, I care what people believe, but I can agree that what's probably more important for me is how they believe, how they come to conclusions rather than yeah. what it is that they end up at. Because it's that methodology that they use that dictates right. what they ultimately are convinced of or what they do find to be true. And if you can improve yeah. that, then everything else after that gets better. Like if sure. It, what do you You're think dealing about with that? reality then? <laughs> yeah. The world the world would absolutely change if we would focus on critical thinking. Boom, I love this guy. In schools. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Carl's a good guy. We need to have you back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think if we, man, if we could teach critical thinking in school, which I like as an actual class, it's just like a, hey, sit down, maybe as like a addition to communication or something. But let's think about why we think about stuff as early as possible. Let's have a class like that. And it's not a cell for atheism. It's not a cell for any religion, any or like any kind of creed. It's just a chance to have a kid understand that what they might think or believe could improve with nuance, could improve with introspection, and that they can bounce ideas off of other people and get a improved worldview as a result of it. And I think stuff like that can just really help people and society as a whole overall uh, immensely. Just my point. I think one of the no now is that there is so much information that's out there oh, through the yeah. internet yes. that you really have to be able to uh, discern what is factual versus what is just made up. I agree. If you're right. able to determine what's factual and you can use a logic train, you will come up with the best available solution. That just seems so basic Temporal. to me. Yeah. I dig it. Yep. All right. Final words, everybody. Uh, Carl, we'll save you for last. Or actually, Larry, you, you could be last. Fanny, do you have anything that you'd like to say before we uh, close up the show? Yes, I, I wanted to bring up that we're talking about critical thinking and epistemology. And I don't know if you remember this weekend, uh, Peter Bogosian books coming out, yeah. How to Have Impossible Conversations. Ooh, I love and, it. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. Yes, yes, and I'm very excited to tell you that uh, I'm starting with him a conversation in my channel. So nice, very cool. yeah. sweet, very nice. <laughs> When's this? Well, we have talked for the last week, and now we decided to wait for me to get the book, my book, <laughs> my version, and then I very will cool. read a few, a few uh, chapters, and then we're gonna talk about the book. Very cool. Excellent. Very nice. Very very cool. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll say, Hey, um, I'm going to the Kentucky free thought, uh, convention in Kentucky to speak and do a panel with Tracy Harris from the atheist experience. Um, Very I'll nice. be coming up on Saturday the 21st and I'll be setting up a table afterwards there. I already got some people who have been reaching out who'd like to sit down with me. Um, I'm looking forward to the event, not the drive. <laughs> I don't want to drive that much, but I am looking forward be, to the event. I'll be there. I'll see you. Oh, okay. What? You're gonna, yeah. you're gonna there? Oh, okay, that's wonderful. I'm gonna okay. drive up that morning, I believe. All right, all right. See you there, Larry. Okay, looking okay. forward to it. Carl, uh, final words. Okay, let's just go with blatant self promotion and say uh, <laughs> you can find me on liberalatheistcomic.com. You can also follow the Facebook page on that and Twitter. Okay, sounds real good. And for my final word, everybody's going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that hells and heavens and hell, I mean, heaven <laughs> and hells, yes, are, and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. 
and we'll see you next week. Cool. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you for having me.